The Sportage is one of the longest running nameplates in Kia's entire lineup and it's been completely redesigned for 2023. What's up folks, I'm Dave Underkoffler, Editor-in-Chief of Autolist.com, back with another one week test drive. This week's victim is the 2023 Kia Sportage Hybrid. This is a compact crossover that comes in either gas hybrid or plug-in hybrid variants. It's been completely overhauled for 2023 and competes against a lot of industry heavyweights. That includes the Toyota RAV4, Honda CRV, Mazda CX-5, and Chevy Eco. Equinox. So is this car up to their high standards or is it really just all flash? Let's go spend a week with it and find out. All right, let's do a walk around of the new Sportage. So a little bit of housekeeping, probably wondering where in Kia's lineup this falls. So this is larger than the Nero and the Seltos, but it is smaller than the Sorento. The Sorento is the smallest three row option. This is just a two row model. And then of course, on top of the Sorento, you have the Telluride. A lot of Kias out right now. Really like the exterior styling on this. It stands out. A lot of the other models in this segment can be a little boring, they kind of blend in. So if you want something that stands out, this is a good choice. You can see you've got LED daytime running lights right there. The actual headlights are those right there. This is a mid-grade EX model. So it's about $34,000 with some options as you see it right here. The base Sportage Hybrid starts at about $28,500. Both those prices include destination. Uh, you can see you've got 18-inch alloy wheels. There's some chrome treatment, brushed metal. This is kind of a nice little textured pattern right there. Helps the Sportage stand out. And then move to the back. So what do you guys think? Is this a nice design or is this just going to age poorly and look kind of outdated in a few years? Let us know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. The wheelbase is up 3.4 inches versus the previous Sportage, so you do have more interior space. I'll show you the cargo. 40 cubic feet of cargo space in the back, which is nice. The seats, as you can see, are split 60-40. They fold almost flat. Got my bag there. So plenty of cargo space. I like that. You also the lever to fold the seats is right there. It's handy to have it back here without having to go inside. All right, let's see the rest of the interior. All right, now to the interior of the Sportage. Probably the first thing you notice is this screen here. This is a 12.3 inch color touchscreen infotainment system. Uh, base models are gonna have an eight inch screen here, but we're in a mid-grade EX. So yeah, 12.3 inches. It's a nice setup. The screen is responsive, it's bright. You can sort of flip between different functions. You can uh, rotate so the map will be here and the radio controls will be there. That's nice. Uh, down below, this is probably my least favorite thing of about the Sportage. Uh, Kia, I hope you're listening. Please change this. And other automakers don't do this. So right now it looks very normal, right? You've got uh, dual zone climate control. This is a touch panel. Everything works really well. The problem is if you want to then control this infotainment system, you have to hit this button and then this whole panel changes the functions. Now that's kind of a cool parlor trick, right? It's cool for the first 10 minutes that you're driving this car. But then you realize that every time you want to go back and forth between the climate control and the radio controls, you have to hit that stupid button see, to get to it. And that's frustrating when, you know, you're fiddling with the climate control and then you go to change the volume on the stereo. No, you've got to hit this button first. So it doesn't seem like a big deal, but we've been driving this car for almost a week now. And I promise you, it's driving me nuts. So this is one of those instances in which it's good to test drive the vehicle, right? Take it out. Like I said, this may seem kind of cool at first, but take the vehicle out for, you know, as long a test drive as you can and see if it gets bothersome. It's not a deal breaker, but just something to be aware of if you're shopping for the Sportage. So anyway, don't love that setup. Uh, meanwhile, the rest of our car, we have an EX model. So this is another 12.3 inch screen there for the instrument panel. That's configurable. I do like that. Uh, you'll notice ours is the hybrid. So we have a rotary shift knob. So it's very easy to use. Um, if you're shopping for a gas model Sportage, that model is just going to have sort of a normal console shifter there. So just something to be aware of. Uh, and then the plug-in hybrid also has this setup. Uh, again, our EX version. So we've got fake leather seats. Quite comfortable. These are heated up front. We have a heated leather wrap steering wheel. We also, our option package adds a panoramic moonroof. That's nice. And there's LED interior lighting, which you can't see. 
Um, otherwise, yeah, it's a functional cabin. This does, the system, this does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but it is not wireless, something to keep in mind. You've got wireless smartphone charging down there, and those are your inputs uh, for the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Another cool little trick is on the back of each of these front seats, there's a little USB charge plug, so that's kind of cool. Nice little touch for the rear passengers. Good amount of storage. You got cup holders, cubbies. These are adjustable, so depending on how large the cup is. So right, this is what you'd expect in a crossover. Good amount of, of storage, very practical. So there you have it. Let's check out the back seats. All right, now rear seat space. And if you've seen our videos before, you know the drill. I put the front seat to where I would have it if I were sitting up there. So basically I'm sitting behind myself. I'm six foot one. And as you can see in the new Sportage, I've got more than enough room for my feet, my knees, and my head. This is where you see the benefits of that longer wheelbase over the previous generation. It really shows up in the rear seat space. I like that a lot. Another nice feature is that this rear seat actually reclines. So if I want to take a nap, that's a nice little touch. On gas models, this seat will actually slide fore and aft as well. It doesn't on this hybrid or plug-in hybrid model because the battery is down here, but still a lot of space, a lot of functionality back here. I really like that about the new Sportage. All right, let's take a quick look under the hood. The Sportage Hybrid that we're testing has a 1.6 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine and an electric motor. Together, they make 227 horsepower. It's paired with a six-speed automatic transmission and all-wheel drive. If you step up to the plug-in hybrid, it uses the same gas engine, but a larger electric motor and a bigger battery for up to 32 miles of all-electric driving and 261 total horsepower. The base gas model has a 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine, not turbocharged, that makes 187 horsepower and it's paired with an eight-speed automatic transmission. All right, driving impressions. I have to say I've really enjoyed driving this car. Remember, it's the hybrid, so 227 total horsepower, and that's more than enough. I definitely think it's worth the step up over the base gas engine, which just has 185 horsepower. That can sort of feel kind of tinny or like it's working really hard when you floor it or when you need that passing power. This car, not so much. Again, 227, more than enough for your daily driving, for your on-ramps, for basically any scenario you have it in. What I also like is you have that power plus some really good fuel economy. I'll tell you what it is in a little bit, but I'm really impressed with what we're getting so far. We also have the six-speed automatic transmission that's standard on this car, and it's the best kind of transmission, right? It stays out of the way, it's seamless, and what also is seamless about this car is the transition from just gas power to gas plus electric to just electric. It's a sophisticated system in that you can't tell when it's making those transitions, so I really like that. All right, three more things that I like about driving this car. One, the brakes feel great. Sometimes in hybrids, they can feel too mushy or artificial when you push down on the brake pedal. Not so in this car. If you've never driven a hybrid and you got in this car, you would never know that it actually was a hybrid based on how the brakes feel. So kudos to Kia in that way. I also like the ride quality. It's firm, but not too firm. It's comfortable without being soft or squishy. Kia did a really nice job of finding that balance that's a lot harder to do than you might think. So I'm really enjoying that about the Sportage. And also road and wind noise. They don't exist. They don't come in the cabin. This is a quiet cabin, a serene cabin, a great driving experience overall. So yeah, obviously I really have no nitpicks with how this car drives as a whole. All right, folks, there you have it. Our one week test drive of the 2023 Kia Sportage Hybrid. I just checked our fuel economy and over 350 miles of testing, we averaged 29 miles per gallon, and that's pretty impressive. So if you are considering the Sportage, which you should be, we definitely recommend choosing the hybrid over the gas model. It's not that much more money up front. You'll get that money back in gas savings and you'll have more power to boot. Overall, we've really enjoyed the Sportage. Our only nitpicks are that the front end styling may not be for everyone and there's those really frustrating climate and radio controls inside. So for reviews of the Sportage or anything else you're shopping for, be sure to check out autolist.com. And before you go, like and subscribe to our channel so you can get alerts on all of our future updates. Thanks for watching.